But this project is titled a Citadel. As you can see, it and is partly financed as a part of the EU uh, platform Horizon 2020. And on the part of the Kaspersky Labs, um, it's uh, Kaspersky Lab UK uh, as a participant in this project with European partners. And what's so unique about this project and why are we speaking about that? The point is that um, one of the achievements or achievements of these projects are uh, applicable to all the systems of the critical IT infrastructure, um, irrespectively of um, a sector or industry, irrespectively of a particular country where these uh, systems could be deployed, and um, even uh, despite of uh, particular technologies which um, this architecture and this platform can be uh, used uh, in. And bas basically, mm, um, this is a successful demonstration of the project. And I would say the project is quite unique by, the, mm, by those involved in it. And the leaders of the project are the Open Group uh, Industrial Consortium, which is uh, producing um, the available um, standards for um, computation systems and technologies. Also, the part of the projects are quite many universities and uh, R&D institutions and think tanks, which uh, provide the formal uh, support with the goal so that the system or the, the platform, which would be the final result of this project, could be verified and could be certified uh, in a formal way. On top of that, the project is also um, involves uh, technological partners uh, who provide their own systems, their own technologies and components for uh, the implementation of, um, of uh, the proposed idea to implement this platform. And um, as I finish my preview, I would like to say that the project is also involves some uh, companies which are working with the critical infrastructure, which pilot this platform as it shapes up so that they could um, demonstrate of how this platform can be applicable in the critical infrastructure projects, such as um, connectivity systems, uh, telecom systems, transportation systems, and industrial automation systems. And a bit later, I will show you about these demonstrators. They are quite quite interesting in their own right. The project is designed uh, for the implementation of the platform, which could ensure uh, sustainability, stability of the critical infrastructure systems. As it has been noted here before, uh, security is not the end in itself. It's only the means to achieve sustainability and to achieve the functional uh, safety and security of people, to ensure uh, safety and health of people, of the environment, and, uh, and um, primarily this is the means uh, to achieve um, for this very sustainable and strong system uh, to function, uh, for, first of all, for the system to be resilient, and secondly, for it to function the way it was designed. And this is why we provide our technologies. To give you some proofs, I would like to um, tell you about demonstrators which are um, within this project implement their systems at the proposed platform of the so-called adaptive MILS. And I'll sh share you what the adaptive MILS uh, stands for. As a part of the critical infrastructure, we have the system developer uh, for telecom, uh, this would be hardware and equipment uh, for uh, telecommunications uh, in the public safety systems, in uh, in the telecom systems for um, for the air transportation infrastructure system, the air transportation, and this also includes the supplier of technologies to ensure connectivity of the land lines. It's a NASA uh, team and um, connectivity between the uh, NASA remote control and the NASA orbital team. So what's the features of, of these systems? Uh, you have um, to have a momentous or immediate start of these systems. That is uh, 
we have to include certain technologies that uh, from the moment you in initiate connectivity to the moment you, you engage uh, communication, there should be minimum, the least amount of time possible. And also you have to ensure confidentiality and the strict delineation of uh, telecom channels and um, on the level of domains and on the level of separate um, communication channels within each uh, channel. So all of this is making uh, this uh, challenge for the radio um, communication quite difficult in realization and um, to, imp to, uh, to do this kind of hardware systems. Uh, we also use the um, separate domain systems which had been built especially for this. And the second uh, demonstrator would be the Prague metro system or subway system i think uh, how many people have been have ever been to prague in czech republic this is quite a popular destination and i believe that many of you have been using this uh, local subway system yes it's very comfortable it's uh, very big it's very safe and uh, all of that happens because um, because Unicontrol is supporting them, they provide the telecom systems and the information infrastructure which, which backing up the Prague subway system is quite um, um, distributed, it's quite complex and to ensure its stable functioning and the high degree of public safety requires a lot of effort. One one feature of the system is that it consists of the separate um, segments of the network which have a uh, different uh, criticality level and different um, purpose but again these different segments have to uh, communicate with one another without um, violating the most critical segments in the network and again what we have here is the architecture with uh, separate domains or the domain delineation. And one of the last uh, demonstrators would be the LAC and uh, Paint Shop. This would be the two companies which are um, uh, on the separate locations, but they're interconnected. There is a support team, on-site support team at this company, and there is also remote tech support. and. Um, and when they do any maintenance uh, procedures, they, uh, the actions of the two teams should not overlap. Otherwise, um, technological processes may be broken. And what's also important is that when you do the procedures of the remote maintenance of the systems, there should not be any leaks of information about the, uh, about the recipes used at this uh, paint uh, company or factory, they have some their own know-hows which they keep as a secret, and the maintenance procedure should not result in any leaks of information uh, about the recipes of these lacquers and paints and their own know-how, which is also the um, security problem. So there are two aspects. Uh, one is uh, one is um, uh, resilient functioning, and the second one is, is informational safety. It's always built on the basis of the MILS architecture. The whole idea behind the MILS or M-I-L-S is very simple. This would be the idea of separating all the uh, computation environment onto several safety domains, which are strictly isolated from one another, and the control of information flows between the domains. It's like when you launch on one machine several virtual machines. And this looks somewhat alike virtual machines, but still, how do you get a guarantee that the virtual machines which are launched on one mm, computation device can interact only in a controlled sort of way or environment? For a regular system, no, this would not be possible. But the controlled kernel will be the kernel built on the hyper technologies or be the kernel some other type of a kernel, let's say micro kernel, which would be uh, implemented only one uh, way of communicating domains with one another. It should provide a guarantee of this isolation and separation. And this kind of kernel, special one, is called the separation kernel. And basically, uh, the studies of the separation kernels have been um, have been done for a long time. First, it would be the 1981. It was John Rushman, the one who described the kernels idea. 
and uh, it was described by him and then forgotten for a while, simply because the uh, technological level back in those years was not enough to implement the system with separation kernels. Simply, they did not have any computational capacities for that. And the architecture uh, of, uh, of the available and widely used system would not fit for providing guarantees for domain separation and for implementing uh, this kind of environment as a part of uh, one computational device, which would, be, um, w which would be not different from a distributed system. And they needed that because uh, domain communication should not be somehow distinguishable from the communication of uh, separate machines in a distributed system. The time went on, and uh, in the beginning of the year 2000 and later, the technology is ripening up. And first of all, it's a uh, reverse virtualization technologies which arrived to us, and the computational um, uh, capabilities um, have grown to uh, to a level that we could be speaking about the better isolation, better guarantees of the isolation between the. Uh, domains and the machines. At the same time, having renewed this uh, research, uh, the professionals uh, from Gallup Group and from other academic universities, they have discovered that the same system and the same architecture uh, for quite a long time have been already used in, uh, in uh, commercial kernels uh, for integrated a avionics modules for the aircraft. For example, this uh, kind of architectural approach with uh, domain separation have been used uh, for, for in a different type of computational devices, but not to ensure uh, informational s safety or s security, as for the separation of kernel by John Rushman, but for uh, providing uh, functional uh, safety, as I was saying in Russian, or is for safety in avionics. But um, having combined these two approach, we received uh, MILS uh, acronym, which stands uh, in the very beginning for the multiple independent levels of security and safety multiple independent uh, levels of um, security and safety. And now, um, many people insist that this abbreviation has to be forgotten because um, speaking about the uh, uh, speaking about the safety, there is nothing in there except the domains uh, themselves and the meals-based system themselves. They should be called like that because historically this has just happened like that. And now we are speaking about the meals architecture as the architecture with uh, domain uh, separation for the safety. Not the levels of safety, but domains and a strict control of information flows between the systems. And um, this would be the brief uh, story of the mills origination from the from the moment the idea came about. The mills is interesting because it enables you to uh, to do the formal uh, verifications of the um, safety properties, both for safety property uh, properties and for security properties. But it's only when the set of domains is static and is limited, um, and you can. Uh, you can calculate of how these domains are um, communicating with uh, one another, and at the same time, at the same time, domain communication and the domain composition should be done in such a way that the limitations of these information flows would be um, would be substantial from the standpoint of uh, safety and security. That is. It is not that every system with, that has several virtual machines could be identified as the Mills machine, because it has to provide um, decrease of the verification complexity, and uh, respectively, the its certification for uh, safety and security. Only then it will be an MILS uh, system. The development Mills went in such a way that. Um, it was proposed uh, to get rid of the static uh, aspect and get rid of the MILS limitation um, in the sense that the MILS system is being locked in one computational device and do it at the same time. Because in this computational device, we have the whole distributed system, uh, the same as network. Why don't we implement uh, distributed MILS? Because if we take away, if we take, for example, more or less hyperphysical system such as uh, the network of companies or enterprises or a, a network of um, which which ensures the functioning and support um, within a train or within an airplane it will never be just one computational device there'll be a several computational units which 
are connected with some network technologies. What if we deploy uh, MILS architecture on top of this network? We will have a distributed MILS, uh, but in this case, if the support of the separation kernel within one computational unit has been ensured by technologies, for example, of virtualization, then um, the distributed MILS will require technological support. Um, from the side of the network technologies which have to be uh, which have to be compliant to certain standards which has been implemented as a part of the distributed uh, MILS platform which uh, for the first time has been uh, has been participated by the Austrian producer of the network equipment and the div uh, time triggered Ethernet or Ethernet uh, time time limiter or time triggered Ethernet and they were able to to implement this uh, separation kernel uh, for the distributed MILS system which means that now MILS architecture could be used in the systems of the critical infrastructure in the systems of the IOT and mean in many other things the only limitation being that these systems they are very dynamic and they could change their configuration. They can uh, engage new components. So, so this static configuration against which you give strict guarantees of safety and security and sustainability, it becomes a limitation. And the next uh, uh, orthogonal development is the dynamic mills. Dynamic mills uh, would mean that there is a, a simultaneous development of the uh, platform and the means of the verification certification so that uh, guarantees uh, of the correct and secure uh, behavior would be given not only, not only um, about just one configuration of components, but about the pol policies of the reconfiguring these components so that they could be Mm, could um, altogether build one complex and dynamic system. When you're making changes into this system, it would keep the strict uh, guarantees about safety and security. And this is the path uh, for implementing the highest uh, requirements uh, for systems uh, certification which is absolutely a must uh, for a critical infrastructure. Well, basically this is what, um, this is what uh, the path of the MILS platforms looks like, and the uh, combination of the distributed MILS and dynamic MILS and the systems of monitoring enables you um, to uh, build an adaptive MILS uh, platform. What adaptive MILS is all about? It's the MILS uh, platform uh, which uh, being, uh, being deployed in a system. It reacts uh, to events, both external, for example, cyber attacks, or uh, changes in a certain physical conditions, let's say earthquake or any natural disaster or mm, a simply an increase of the passenger flow in a subway system. And it, it also reacts on internal events which are happening within a system and some malfunctions and errors and, uh, and human factor and things like that. Uh, and it, it's going back to this reaction to the level of basic reconfiguration and uh, switches on and, and off these components of dynamic mills within a network so that you can keep a certain um, guarantees for safety and security, for information security, for the functional security, and for the resilience of of the system. And at the same time, the adaptiveness as a concept can be interpreted differently. Many people say that adaptiveness is uh, adaptation uh, via mutation, which is happening which is happening in all the living organisms. If you have any external impact, a living organism is mutating uh, to be able to uh, survive in the nature. And a part of the organisms would survive, the other part not. It's a different type of adaptation here. It's an adaptation which is demonstrated by a human behavior or sort of mimic the human behavior before doing any action or making any changes uh, we as humans we calculate our next steps which are needed to, to make so that we could achieve let's say the next state uh, or situation and the theory which stands behind the adaptive mills is very much uh, alike you calculate um, several steps and based uh, on uh, safety and security guarantees, which the certification system can provide against these easily traceable um, steps, in terms of complexity of the steps, it gives uh, guarantees about the total changes. Uh, the state changes, um, the evaluation is being done of four criteria uh, on, on, on the side of the verification module. 
and the instruments which which support uh, support uh, the state which would correspond to the certified level and then there could be yet another reconfiguration it's a system of small and bigger steps and this is what we call adaptation as a part of the adaptive uh, mills well basically this is what you can see on the slide right now now what's the role of uh, Kaspersky labs uh, technologies in it as a part of a tool uh, for monitoring internal and external changes we use our own proprietary technology which has become the basis of the so-called uh, monitoring planning for the mills uh, platforms uh, it gets information about these uh, changes and uh, does some calculations which are preset for this certain platform uh, implementation so that uh, this information could be passed on to the level of re reconfiguration and adaptation that is this is exactly that uh, feedback loop which is very important uh, to maintain a very very um, predictable behavior on the system based on the adaptive mills uh, platforms this would be a system uh, Kaspersky security system initially it was and it is a part of the operational system Kaspersky OS this would be the engine, uh, safety engine, which initially has been mm, designed and uh, implemented as the separation, mm, separation part, uh, separatable part. And presently, Kaspersky security system would be an independent component which could be used, let's say, uh, for ensuring safety and security of the virtual machines interaction or processes within uh, different operational systems. Uh, for example, Linux OS or, uh, or Cisco uh, some operational system, which is um, one of the partners in the Citadel project. It's a system of the real time which has been certified for the high level of functional safety or just safety. And uh, what's the uniqueness of the system? It's uh, unique uh, because it has been built in such a way uh, so that it implements the flexible policies and the rules uh, of safety for, uh, for domains interaction based on the MILS platform. And for that, uh, there is a quite a unique set of configuration tools uh, with which you build a, a descriptions uh, uh, um, which would be specific for an industry, for a sector of economy uh, and certain policies of safety and security. And then this config is being uh, compiled into a binary image. This would be security runtime, which um, receiving information about the domain's communication is calculating a certain uh, safety and security policies and then forwarding them back or, or sending them back to the kernel, separation kernel, to allow or to permit particular communication. I know it sounds really complex, but I'll explain. So this would be an example of informal policies, which has been written for a specific demonstrator for our uh, lacquer and paint uh, company, JW something, and uh, which are used uh, to control to control that the technological process at this factory is, is going the right way. This is an informal policy which could be formulated as a functional requirement or a functional option so that uh, we could ensure the right uh, time spans um, between a certain operation at this factory or for timely um, uh, obtaining notification that uh, all the uh, technological process components are ready to do whatever operations in the right uh, time and also to monitor that at no stage of this technological process we can see any violations or any malfunctions in the previous period of time so these would be a very versatile mathematical renderings which have to be formulated uh, either in the form uh, of um, some limitations about the number or um, or time limitations or sequence of events uh, limitations all of this has to be formulated in a formal way so that the kernel of separation would um, not be doing the calculations themselves because it's a critical component which is ensuring the safety and viability of the system it does only 
the following. It uh, executes whatever is commanded to it by the safety and security engine. And the security engine has to calculate within a certain uh, time uh, slot with a guarantee. It has to do the right uh, calculations to ensure that there would be no intrusion by the um, malignant actors uh, which will try to tamper with this uh, engine. So this is the unique technology by Kaspersky security system which could be used uh, for uh, for random description of, uh, of rights which are taken from firewall or taken from the access control um, model or you, you take it from the cyber physical system and you describe it in, in a way they look in the real life so that you give uh, guarantees that the process is not only safe and secure, it is not only Mm, it is not dangerous for people and for the environment, but it also flows the way it should go, and uh, it ensures the stable functioning of the whole system. Uh, this, uh, this is a must for critical infrastructure. And uh, now briefly uh, about uh, the project is quite uh, complex. It's, uh, it's quite big. The application has been submitted in 2015. It was launched in May 2016. Uh, the runtime is three years, and now we have the integration phase. And quite a big number of partners. We have very complex communication and uh, external controls because uh, it's uh, it's a project which has been financed by the European Union. A lot of paperwork, a lot of uh, uh, components integration because different technologies they have different uh, degrees of maturity by the time you assemble assemble them, and um, and the, their state, their condition has to be adjusted. Uh, has to be you know, com combined with one another. And you can also have some issues at this stage. But we have been working uh, quite intensely. We have a great and wonderful uh, leader. And, and it's uh, just great. And we are so happy to see that these uh, paper research like university research uh, or the archived research are being uh, brought back to life uh, due to the achievements of the technologies, are being used in real life, and are helping. As um, our examples are showing, our demonstrators are showing, they are helping to improve the sustainability of the critical infrastructure systems, and I believe that uh, uh, the future will be with that. Uh, that we should not just try to identify separate uh, vulnerabilities and attacks. Instead, we have to keep the system in a workable conditions the way it should be performing in spite of any external or internal uh, tempering or impact. Thank you.